With everybody working from home these days, you're probably wondering what kind of device is going to be right for you and what's going to optimize your workflow. So bring in the tablets, bring in the laptops, but today we're going to be looking at tablets, specifically the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus and the Galaxy Tab S6. Let's talk about pricing and configurations. What you're looking at for the Tab S7 Plus is going to be $849.99 starting price. With the Tab S6, you're looking at $649. It's also worth noting that you can evoke a trade-in through Samsung's website right now for a discount off of this one, which this tablet actually belongs to Samsung right now and I got to send it back pretty soon. Um, you will get $450 for this towards the purchase of the Tab S7 Plus, and that effectively brings this down to $399. So if you do have one, that's something you should definitely consider. Moving on, in terms of the color options you're going to get for both, you're going to have the Mystic Bronze, which is what I have here. There's also a Mystic Black and a Mystic Silver. For the Tab S6, you're going to have Mountain Gray, which is what I'm working with here, Cloud Blue, and Blush Rose, I believe it is. Rose Blush, I got that completely in reverse, which is a really nice uh, sort of like rose goldish color. You are also going to get a standard range of storage and uh, RAM options. So for the Tab S7 Plus, it starts at 128 gigabytes with six gigs of RAM, and then you have the 256 and the 512, with, which both come with eight gigabytes of RAM. For the Tab S6, you have the 128 gigabyte, which comes with six gigs of RAM, and if you move up to the 256, um, there being no 512 option, you'll get eight gigabytes of RAM. In terms of connections for both, these are both the Wi-Fi variant, but for the Tab S7 Plus, there is a 5G variant, which comes with sub six category 5G, as well as millimeter wave. So there's gonna be that speed boost if you do go for that when you're connecting to data. And for the Tab S6, there is a Wi-Fi and a 4G LTE model. Now, both of them come with Bluetooth 5.0, and GPS built in, so that's always good to know. Um, most people are probably gonna go for the Wi-Fi version, but if you did wanna go ahead and, and expand your capabilities, you can go for the 5G or the 4G LTE versions of these. Taking a look at what comes inside the box, you're gonna get your S Pen here on both of them. And the S Pen has been improved, which I'll go over in a further part of this comparison. You're also gonna get a USB type A to type C cable. Your charging brick here, which I think is 15 watts. Um, don't quote me on that because Samsung usually, if it's anything higher than both of those voltages, will give you a adapter that has a USB type C input instead of a USB type A input that you see here, but I could be wrong. One thing you do get over the Tab S7 Plus from the Tab S6 is you still have these pen tips here, which Samsung seems to be removing from a lot of devices now that use an S Pen. So that's something to keep in mind. Both devices are also going to have the SIM slash SD card ejection tool, and that's pretty much it for what you're looking at with what you're getting for the device. Some last things to note about the design of the devices is the Tab S7 Plus will be 1.30 pounds, while the Tab S6 is going to be 0.92 pounds. They're both gonna be pretty easy to handle. Of course, the Tab S7 Plus is heavier and it does feel a little bit denser, but both of them are made equally of really good quality materials, so you won't get that cheap feeling. 
Another thing to note is I do have screen protectors on both of them and I did notice an issue with the screen protector on the Tab S6 here. And that happens with the fingerprint display. I kind of had to re-register my finger again because um, I made a separate user profile for both of these tablets and it wouldn't really read my finger. So that's something to be cognizant of. On the front of the devices, which you're going to be looking at starting with the Tab S7 Plus, is a 12 by four inch screen with a resolution of 2800 by 1752. While on the Tab S6, you're looking at a 10.5 inch screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. Both are going to have an eight megapixel camera situated right here at the top, and that will be placed differently depending on which tablet you buy or receive or whatever. And for the Tab S6, it's kind of more in this portrait mode, which is more like a book versus the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, which is more kind of like this laptop, sort of having that camera right where it's supposed to be, in my opinion anyway. Um, that's going to be important because when you do use the Galaxy Tab S6 in landscape mode, keep in mind, you could accidentally cover that camera right there. And if you're on a conference, that may kind of be embarrassing. Other than that, the cameras to the right of them, there is an ambient light sensor for auto brightness. And the last thing you want to know about the front is that they both have an in-display fingerprint right here and right here. So if you're worried about security, you have many ways to secure this, including face unlock also. So that's there. Um, if you want to see them stacked up on top of each other, let's turn this screen off. Here's how they do stack up. If you notice, the Galaxy Tab S6 is actually quite a bit smaller than the Tab S7. But then again, most people or a lot of people probably don't want a really big tablet and some people do. So you do have that choice there in the matter if you are looking into either one of these. The back of the devices are very, very similar. Both have this smooth to the touch aluminum, which feels really nice and premium in the hand. Uh, they both have the Samsung branding, albeit on the Tab S7, of course, it's in a different place. You'll see antenna lines on the bottoms and the tops for all your wireless connections, like the 5G, Bluetooth I mentioned, and the GPS. And you'll also see the strips for the S Pens. Now, on the Tab S7 Plus, it must go facing towards the camera or else it will not charge. Um, it won't even stick completely, actually. And on the Tab S6, it faces down. Now, in terms of the magnets for both, I feel that the Tab S7 Plus uh, was actually improved a little bit. It does stay on a little bit more. That's not to say the Tab S6 doesn't stay on, but I've had it come off when I didn't have my case on. So a little minuscule detail, but still an important one. If we take a look at the cameras here, you're looking at a 13 megapixel camera as well as a five megapixel camera here, but the Tab S7 has an LED flash. And I know that's something that a lot of people have asked for. So Samsung bought it back for everybody who has asked for it. The other things to note is that under the hood, you're looking at a Snapdragon 865 Plus processor, which is the latest and the greatest. Whereas the Tab S6 is a Snapdragon 855 processor. Um, I would always tell people don't really worry too much about the processors of a device because it really comes down to what you're going to use it for. Um, Yes, the Snapdragon 865 Plus is the strongest, sorry, the best, fastest, whatever you want to call it. But do you really need something that's going to be that fast when all you want to do is consume media or, I don't know, type up a Word document or something very, very basic? And that's not to say the 855 on this is any slouch. Um, it really does perform. But of course, you might see situations where the 865 Plus does perform a little bit better. 
One last thing to note about the under the hood specs is that the Tab S7 Plus has a 10,090 milliamp battery with the 45 watt charging capability, whereas the Tab S6 has a 7,040 milliamp battery. It's worth it to note that no matter what version of this tablet you get, whether it's the Wi-Fi or the 5G for the Tab S7 Plus or the 4G LTE or Wi-Fi on the Tab S6, the batteries do not change. If we take a look at the right side of both tablets, you'll notice that they're pretty much exactly the same. What you're gonna see is the power button, the volume rocker for your volume up and down, a hole for one of the microphones, and a slot for your SIM card slash SD card if you have the connected versions of these, or if you have the Wi-Fi version, it's just going to be an SD card slot. It's also worth noting that that SD card slot does go up to one terabytes, so storage should not be an issue whatsoever, no matter which one you get in terms of the storage. If we take a look at the left side of the tablet, tablets, what you're gonna see here is two indentations and some pogo pins. You probably noticed that the Tab S6 has four pins instead of three here. Keep in mind that does not make a difference. These are actually going to be for the keyboard, which I'll go over in another separate video so I don't cram that in here. Um, and it just connects magnetically to the bottom and aligns itself using these holes that you see here. So as far as the top of the devices, what you're gonna see is two speakers, a microphone, and some more antenna lines with one more additional antenna line being on the Tab S7 Plus. On the bottom of the tablets, it's pretty similar to the top. You're gonna find two more speakers, uh, three antenna lines on the Tab S7 Plus, and a USB Type-C charging port. Like I said before, the charging port on the Tab S7 Plus does 45 watt charging. Either way, both of them do charge extremely fast, so you won't have an issue. As far as the software, performance, and features between both of these devices, you'll really be hard pressed to find that many differences. And that is due to the fact that Samsung now has what's called One UI. Um, that's their skin or overlay, whatever you want to call it, that was kind of upgraded from what they used to have, which was TouchWiz. So they kind of realized that they don't want to fragment experiences on the Galaxy Tabs anymore. And that's kind of what you're getting right now. On the Tab S6, what you're looking at is One UI version 2.1. On the Tab S7 Plus, you're looking at version 2.5. The Tab S6 is definitely going to get One UI version 2.5, and I would probably say really, really soon. So don't let that deter you from considering this as a tablet. Um, both of these are also definitely going to get One UI version 3.0. The other thing is that they are running Android version 10, as you can see here, and they're both definitely going to get Android 11 whenever Samsung gets around to it. So the software versions wise, um, not too much of a difference, like I said. And there's definitely going to be the fact that Samsung will be coming up with updates. One of the features Samsung implemented in the software for One UI 2.5 on the Tab S7 Plus, and this is a mini detail, but I, it's a welcome detail for me at least. On the web browser, when you go into your settings now, it no longer takes up a full page. And that's a very, it's a minuscule difference, but it's definitely, um, as you can see, I'm a Sonic fan, very big Sonic fan. Uh, it's a very big difference for me because I just kind of don't like being immersed in a menu and I have that on airplane mode, so that's embarrassing. But let's go here and go to menu and see, on the settings, um, on the Tab S6, you kind of have to go to this full on 
settings page and then go back and see your change. Whereas on the Tab S7 Plus, you can kind of just set anything from here and it takes effect immediately. So I like that. Uh, small detail, but a welcome one. Now, if we move on, one of the other differences between the tablets is that you now have edge panels, just like what's on your Samsung phone on the Tab S7 Plus, whereas on the Tab S6, you sort of just still have this multi-window tray, which is, that's it. That's all you're going to get for now. I'm pretty sure that they will add the edge panels on the Tab S6 when One UI 2.5 comes to it. Um, however, don't get too excited with these edge panels here. They are similar to your phone, but one of the differences you will find is if you go into settings and you go to menu, you can't download anymore. So this is pretty much what you're going to get here. That's literally it, at least for right now. Maybe in One UI version 3.0, they will allow you to download them. So, you know, just don't, don't think it's gonna be the same exact experience as on your phone, but it's there either way. One of the other big differences between both devices in terms of their multi-window experience is that Samsung kind of bought back a feature um, I really, really missed on the Tab S7 Plus. And that feature is the ability to use more than two windows. This was first introduced on the Note Pro 12.2, which allowed you to use four windows at the same exact time. Um, it's not four windows, but you can do three. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's say if we go here, and this is a pre-made one um, I had. And on the Tab S6, let's do this. Come on, bar, come on. This bar is kind of hard to come out. I don't know why. All right, let's just do this then. Let's open this in split screen view. And let's open settings, whatever. So as you can see here, there's only going to be the option to do two windows on the Tab S6. Um, I'm like 50% sure that that's gonna continue even when you get One UI 2.5 on the Tab S6, only because they're really, if, if I'm thinking about this correctly, they're probably reserving the triple window experience for the bigger screen. So that is uh, something to take notice of. If this matters to you, you definitely have to go with the Tab S7 Plus. Another thing I like with the tri-window or multi-window experience on the Tab S7 Plus is the fact that you can actually switch the screens now into places that are more convenient. So if I touch this, these little three dots here, which may or may not show up on camera, as you can see, they kind of switch themselves around. And I can just kind of do that over and over again. I think I can actually go here because there are two dots here. Okay, nope. All right, so it's only there. And you can now move windows into the place of another window. So if I go here and I touch on this little bar, which by the way, they made that a little bit different. Um, I believe, no, I'm thinking about pop-up window, which pop-up window is actually still here. But as you can see, I just switched uh, YouTube to the top left corner and the browser to the bottom while my file stays here. And if I wanted to switch my files to the bottom, all I do is tap this little blue bar right here and drag and drop. The other thing is there are some other options here. So if I still want to completely full screen, whoops, there goes one of my other reviews. If I wanna completely full screen this app, I can do that from here by pressing the full screen window. Or if I wanna just pop it out, I can do it that way too. Uh, let's actually see if you can bring it back into mix up. There are a lot of different buttons here that I didn't see before. 
All right. Okay, and yeah, you can definitely just bring it back into its triple window configuration. So kudos to Samsung for that. That's a really useful feature. Um, I've tried this with Microsoft Office. Uh, of course, I'm not going to open that up because I have personal files in there right now, but that's definitely um, a very useful feature. Very, a very good use of space, if I may say so myself. Another simple but kind of minor detail, and I'm going to take this tab away really quick, is the fact that you can actually... And finally, tap things like move to trash or cancel or whatever button, whatever have you right here. Um, you can actually tap those in the same area you tapped on. So if I was using this Tab S7 Plus and let's say, for instance, I go to delete, now I can just go right here instead of having to hold it with one hand and press move to trash right there or cancel right there. So the contextual menus are on the, they're, they're pretty much gonna be right where your finger is, which is definitely a very, very good use of space in my opinion. Not something big, but like I said, it's there. If we take a look at the last thing I wanna show you, um, as you can, probably tell I'm just gonna put my password in because no one can figure that out anyway and I'm gonna change it um, as you can tell there's pretty much not too much that is different between these devices in terms of the software I kind of struggled with finding um, things that were significantly different but uh, hopefully these will be helpful examples and if we go into Dex, one of the things that is different now is that the icons in One UI version 2.5, because I'm pretty sure this is software, are situated in the center here now, as opposed to them all just coming out from the left side. This kind of got annoying when you had um, an overflow of windows that would just open up here and you kind of had to scroll back and forth. There were many times where I just basically touched one by accident that I didn't want to. And the way Dex handles it here is when you have that overflow of windows, there's now an arrow that pops up and the apps that are not going to fit on the bar here just kind of pop up in this little bar up top and you just press the one you want. So um, definitely more precision. You can also use Dex wirelessly now so projecting it to a TV, and I'll probably do a separate video for that once I figure out how I'm going to film that without showing every single thing in the house. And uh, that is it for the software features, or at least everything I can think of that might be relevant or maybe important. Before I move on to the battery test, my little unofficial battery test. One of the things I also wanted to make a note of, um, a very minor detail, but still uh, a pretty good one in my opinion still, um, is the fact that Samsung allows for eight icons on the bottom bar of the Tab S7 Plus instead of the six you see here on the Tab S6. That's, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be due to the difference in size so that may not change even with an upgrade and it's a very minor detail but it's a very welcome one at least for my use cases now moving on to the battery test um, as you can see here I have my 10,000 milliamp uh, Samsung battery just charging both of the devices um, they should be fully charged now they really weren't that bad so let's go to device right here. Yep, and as you can see, fully charged. Let's optimize them now so they don't have anything else running. I just switched to another profile so I have less services and stuff running. So let's see how this goes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a YouTube video 
um, something that's pretty long. And I'm going to use a playthrough of one of my favorite games. And then we have to go through the ads. So this is pretty much just so we can start. Let's pause that there. Let's pause that one there. I do have YouTube Premium, just not on this account. All right, let's full screen that. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to do something with a lot of color so the screen kind of has to work. And let's turn this up to about there and about there. All right, let's take out the battery. And what, oh, sorry if that was really loud. I forgot this is a wooden table. What we're going to do is, it is 10, hold on. It is 10.54 right now. I'm not going to shoot or aim for a specific time that I'm going to leave these playing, but I'm going to try to go for the longest I can. So let's say that's 2 hours and 29 minutes. Uh, I can wait 2 hours and 29 minutes to pick up my tap at 7 plus again. Yeah, we'll just let this whole thing play through. All right, so we're starting. All right, so I am back now, and it kind of seems like I guess the videos weren't playing in sync. Um, totally forgot that the same ads wouldn't actually play uh, for both of these, so it looks like there was a longer ad on one of them, um, particularly by two seconds on the Tab S7 Plus. But let's take a look at the time. So it is 1.43 right now. And let's see how they did in terms of the battery life. And the reason I went with uh, these long plays, whoops. The reason I went with these long plays is because uh, obviously I don't know how many people play games or anything along those lines, but Sonic has a lot of colors. I wanted to kind of choose something that would push the AMOLED screen maybe as hard as it can or just maybe to the midpoint so I thought something uh, that would be pretty loud and something that would push this screen so now that I got that out of the way if we take a look at the battery life let's see what we're down to interesting so as you can see, the Tab S6 has 69% available battery. Um, the Tab S7 has 65% available. Um, it is a bigger screen. It does have a bigger battery. Maybe there should, or maybe there will be some kind of optimization um, in terms of the software that can maybe help that. Or maybe it is because of the hardware that's in here and the battery not being, oh, look, it just dropped to 64. Um, it could be any combination of stuff, of course. Um, I definitely, I believe I had them on the same volume or so, but either way, um, yep, that's the battery test. Uh, in this case, I don't think anybody will have an issue at least getting through a full day with any of these tablets, of course. So I just kind of wanted to do this test to make it fair and not really just tell you about the battery life. Uh, let's even go on the battery usage, which should show us some more stuff. So here's everything. If you want to go ahead and see that. Oh, wait a minute. I actually had the Samsung internet browser running on here. All right, so I swear and I close everything, but I think you get the idea. Yeah, this has nothing else running but that. And there are two instances of YouTube, which is also interesting. 
Either way, like I said, you should not have a problem with that. And these things charge insanely fast. Um, let's take a look at just how fast they will. So next, let's take a look at how fast these batteries actually charge. For accuracy purposes, I'm using the charges that came with both devices. As you can see here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave them on the charger and I'm going to set a timer for about five minutes and we'll see what happens. So let's set that timer first. Five minutes. All right, plug both of them in. All right, so as you can see here, we have some seconds elapsed. Um, the five minutes has passed, and you can see that the Tab S7 Plus, by the way, I have both of these on adaptive brightness. Uh, just to kind of make it fair, I forgot to turn that off on the Tab S6 before. Um, but you can see that this got to 67% in that five minutes. Uh, let me turn off this timer, actually. All right. Didn't work. Um, and the Tab S6 got to 70, well, just now got to 73, and that got to 67. Um, and let's just take these out. This is just supposed to be a general idea of how fast these will charge. Now, keep in mind, I am using the chargers that came in the box, and technically speaking, the Tab S7 Plus is capable of 45 watt charging. So I'd imagine if you had a charging brick, uh, something even like this, which is the one that comes with most of the new phones, and has that type C connection here, you're probably gonna get faster charging speeds here and definitely if you get a 45 watt. To kind of summarize this comparison with everything we've gone over, both of these tablets I feel like are going to serve whoever wants to buy them very well or whoever is considering buying them uh, very well. Whether you're using these for media intake or work, you're definitely gonna get the benefits of the one of, well, I guess you could say two of the best displays on the market, two of the faster Android tablets or the fastest Android tablets on the market, um, two of the best cameras on the market in terms of the front and the back. I mean, they're tablet cameras, but they are pretty much going to be one of the better ones out there. And you're going to get the benefit of all of these software upgrades. Of course, to remember the differences between the Tab S7 Plus um, you do have that try window, uh, the triple window on here. So if that's something you see yourself using, um, by all means, definitely look into the Tab S7 Plus. But if that's not something you care about, maybe you want a lighter tablet. Um, not to say this is extremely heavy, but maybe you want a lighter tablet and maybe you don't mind waiting for the software update, which is going to come pretty soon. The Tab S6 has... It's really never steered me wrong. So hopefully this comparison will help you make an informed choice 
Um, let me know what you are thinking in the comments, which one you're going to go with. Um, if there's anything I have left out, then please also let me know in the comments. If it's something I feel I would need a video for, I'll definitely make one. But if it's something I can just answer right there and then, um, I will do so. I will definitely, I definitely like to do so. I definitely like to engage and kind of see where people are, what people, what people are thinking really. This has been What I Have Reviews and have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world and see you in the next one. So I know I said I was ending the video, but one thing I did want to say is I want to give my wife a shout out for getting me this really awesome desk that basically kind of like pivots and uh, has storage and all that stuff. Uh, this has nothing to do with the review, but it's something very, very important to me. And she has inspired me to kind of do these reviews. Um, she's also inspired me to try and not be really perfect with this. So uh, I know this review, this comparison was not perfect, but Again, um, I hope to get better, like I said in my other videos, and I just wanted to give her a shout out for inspiring me to do this and uh, continue to work at this. So again, have a good day or a good night, wherever you are in the world, and now I'm signing out.